the judgment. In Africa right now, you have an Ebola breakout. They say that this disease has no cure. It's incubation period, meaning the period of time that is in you and you show no, no signs of being sick is three weeks. Which means that during the incubation period of three weeks, which you have no signs of sickness, you can spread the disease for a three week period before you even know you're sick and they have no cure for it. This plague or disease broke out in West Africa near Sierra Leone. Just out of nowhere, Ebola, Ebola, Ebola. In Liberia, they have quarantined so many hundreds or thousands of people in a city and they can't get out. Right now, you have people in a city in Liberia, Africa, they won't allow to leave because they said they are infected with Ebola. That's thousands of people. The book says that Satan will come down with great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. Now, if I must say so, the number one thing, the number one teaching that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us was the white man is the devil. And that's the number one problem that our people got with the messenger. Is that teaching. Black pride, black power, original people, most will go for that. But when you call that white man the devil, they don't want to hear it. Now, in Africa, you got this Ebola thing that just happened. But what was going on in West Africa, in Sierra Leone, before this Ebola breakout? In Sierra Leone, you had Tulane University researchers and their Fort Detrick, Maryland <coughs> associates in the bio-warfare community performing experiments in West Africa. The research program occurred in Sierra Leone, the Republic of Guinea and Liberia, said to be the epicenter of the 2014 Ebola outbreak, has had the announced purpose, among others, of detecting the future use of fever viruses as bioweapons. We cut to the chase here. In 2009, researchers from the Army and Tulane University went to, went to West Africa to research hemorrhagic diseases. They, are, they were doing experiments in Africa of a class of diseases that included Ebola. They didn't say that we're over here doing experiments on Ebola. They were doing experiments on the class of diseases by which Ebola was a member of. Now, either in 2013 or this year, the government of Sierra Leone told them to stop experimenting. Before the Ebola breakout, the government in West Africa told the, the, uh, the uh, uh, what's the name of this group? The, uh, the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases and, and, and doctors from Tulane University, they, the government of Sierra Leone within the last year before the outbreak told them to stop their testing. Okay? So you got the white man, let me just cut to the chase here, because it's getting late. You got the white man in Africa doing research on infectious Ebola-like diseases. For, since 2009, the government of Sierra Leone 
told them to stop what they're doing. Now we have an Ebola outbreak. Knowing what we know about white folk, why would white folk be in Africa conducting research to help us? They are not there in Africa conducting research to help us. The white man is the devil. If the government in West Africa would have heard and uh, accepted what the old farm boy Elijah Muhammad taught concerning the white man, that government would not have permitted the devil to come into their country and do those experiments. So what's happening now? Because of lack of knowledge, because of the rejection of the teachings of Allah through his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, you have thousands dying in Africa. You have us dying here in America. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. So what's going on in this judgment? If you don't have the knowledge of Master Farah Muhammad, if you are not, if you don't have the name of the Lord written in your mind, you are headed for destruction. So when you turn on the news and you read about the Ebola breakout, when you turn on the news and you read about Gaddafi being assassinated, when you turn on the news and hear about Mike Brown in Missouri being murdered and assassinated, when you turn on the news and hear about any of your people dying, it is a direct result of the rejection of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad the consequences of rejection. The book tells you that the prophets only seen 144,000 coming out of the judgment with their father's name sealed in their mind. There are approximately 30 million black people in America. 10% of 30 million is 3 million. 10% of that is 300,000. Now you got a 1%. Half of 300,000 is 150,000. That's one half of 1%. So if the black men and women are the children and people of God, the children of Israel, and we are. According to the book, and according to our numbers today in this country, you got less than one half of 1% that's going to make it. The book tells you if the righteous shall scarcely make it, where shall the wicked be? Right? What did I read to you last week? I'm going to read it to you again. I'm about to close. One moment. You know, when I was in, uh, in school, you know, whether it was uh, high school, college, or, or graduate work, you know, a lot of times when there was a very important point that in struggled with stress, they were repeated. They were underlined. And that would be their way to let you know this is going to they wouldn't tell you, this is going to be on the test. But they were really hone in on it. But this is really, you better take note. And that's what I'm doing for you right now. All of them. You better take note. If you go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 15, it reads, Because you have said, because you said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell we are in agreement. 
when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Let me stop right there. I didn't go into that. Dr. Elijah Muhammad went to Mecca and made Hajj. He, made, he said he made seven circuits around that star, that black stone in Mecca. He said, I kissed that star. He said, but I did not like the kissing because of what it means, because of what it represents. I was afraid to tell them that this is me you're talking about here. That stone. The book of Isaiah said, the Lord said, I have laid in Zion a stone, a precious stone, a sure foundation. True. I raised a messenger in America, in Zion, with the sure truth and knowledge, a precious stone, the last holy apostle. I established him in America. He walked in America for 40 years and was not touched. Delivering this truth to you. Gave his life for you. The white man is the devil. The black man and God do for self. Love each other. A sure foundation. A precious stone. This is the judgment. What did it say? Therefore said the Lord God. Oh, who's the Lord? Class. He had a man that no man knew but he himself. Class. Master Farad Muhammad. The Lord God. What did the Lord say in Malachi? Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. In the book of Malachi, I will send you Elijah. In the book of Isaiah, he said, I will lay a stone, a precious stone in Zion. The messenger told you, that's me. I'm the stone. I'm the foundation. You won't make it out of America unless you come by me. So who is Elijah? What relevance is the physical man Elijah? It will deep now. He's physically not here. So who is Elijah? What does Elijah mean? Elijah. Eli. My God, Jah is the Lord. Jah. What did my mother say? Jireh, Jireh, Jah. That's God, the Lord. Elijah means my God is the Lord. Right? Class. Well, if I say, if Yakub Muhammad say, or if you say, my God is the Lord. I have told you my name is Elijah. I say, yeah, well, I'm Elijah. My God, that's what the name means. But can you say you're Elijah if you don't know the name of the Lord? How is your God the Lord if you don't know his name? If you're going to say that I'm Elijah, that my God is the Lord, and my Lord No weapon for him against me shall prosper. Don't rely on all the told you. Every time you look at a black man, you're looking at God. You better grow up. You crying over the 
the most honorable Muhammad is not here. He's here. His teaching and wisdom is here. Master Prophet Muhammad laid us a sure foundation. You hold on to the teachings of Elijah Muhammad. You hold on to that God he taught you about. That's your salvation. Then you will be able to say, you will no longer be a child of God. What did the messenger say? That he makes me want to be with him more and more. And he started making me into himself. Strange. That's, 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 that's deep. There's so much to teach, but there's so little time. So I'm going to teach what's necessary. So, therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will lay in Zion for a sure foundation of stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies, and the water shall overflow the hiding place. Verse 18. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflow of scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. When judgment comes, and you hold on to that light, if I, the Lord is telling you, if I come and find your behind without this knowledge, that's the end of you. You're going to be trodden down by it. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that when he returned, he is not coming to teach. He's coming to gather all those that believe in his messenger. The book of Isaiah said that when they see the Lord, he was covered in blood. Why, why are you covered in blood? I tr tried treading the wine press. What, did, what, what, what was the Lord covered in in the book of Revelation? He, had, he was in a vesture dipped in blood. It's in chapter 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. So the book of Revelation tells you that when Christ comes, he's going to come with the wrath of God, treading the winepress of the wicked. So much so that he's going to have a vesture dipped in blood. The book of Isaiah tells you when they seen the Lord, he was covered in blood. And they asked him, why is thou, why thou garment red and thy apparel? He said, for I've tried in the winepress of the wicked. For, for the year of my redeemed is come. So the card did. So, in verse 18, it says, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. There's a saying when you get married, until death do us part. Your agreement with hell should not stand. Your covenant with death should be disannulled. You about to be taken out. That's what that's what he's telling you. To unto death do us part. Oh, so you so you gonna make lies your refuge? And on the falsehood, you're gonna hide yourself from me? After I laid a precious stone in Zion? Okay. Then you, when the overflowing, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, you won't be trodden down by it. What the book say? My people perish for lack of knowledge. So understand, the judgment is now, <coughs> and these black folks that you see dying are dying as the direct result of the lack of knowledge of the name of the Lord, which is Master Farad Muhammad. Now, you may say that the Lord's name is not Farad, but I tell you what, according to Scripture, 
whatever that name is, and it is Ra. Whatever that name is, if you call upon that name, when it appears in the future, you shall be saved. According to the scripture. I don't prove to you in the scripture that his name is obedience, obey. I don't show you that. So what happens to you in the judgment if the scourge, death and hell, find you without that name sealed in your forehead? You out in the street. Somebody point the gun in your head. God, the body is the temple. God not there. Pharaoh is not there. Your Savior is not there. Yeah, the God. So when you hear about these thousands of folk dying in Africa, and a thousands of your people you're going to see dying in this country, know this, that this is a result, and I repeat myself, this is a result of the rejection or lack of knowledge of the Lord and his name. This is a result of your rejection of Elijah Muhammad. So when you see the oil full of scourge and you're trodden down by it, know that you do not know the name of the Lord and you don't call upon his name. And that name is Farad Muhammad. One last note that I'm going to close. Jesus told you this, that they're they going to say in that day, have we not cast out devils in thy name? And Jesus, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, have we not done this and that in your name? Let me read it. Then I'm close. book of Matthew chapter 7 <clears throat> verse 21 it reads not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven I'm going to address that many will come to me in that day saying Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Why are you calling me Lord? In that day, they were saying to me, Lord, Lord, I don't know you. I done told you that many going to come in my name and say, I am Christ and going to deceive many. Now, I should have, uh, let, me, let me read this to you. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to close right here. In Luke, the chapter 9, verse 18, and it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, Who say the people that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist. But some say Elias. Others say that I'm one of the old prophets is risen again. And he said unto them, But who say you that I am? Peter answered and said, The Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. When his disciples said that thou art Christ,
Jesus told them to say, don't tell no man that thing. Right? That's what Jesus told his followers. So if you out here saying that Jesus is Christ, you are disobeying Jesus. Because Jesus told you in the book of Luke that when the, when the disciples told him, them, that thou art the Son of God, the Christ, he said, don't tell nobody that, right? He gave a commandment. Don't tell nobody that. Okay, Jesus, what's going to happen in the end? They're going to come about it and say, like, right? They are me. You're still supposed to say that. So, hold on. The reason why I am stressing this over and over and over again is because Christianity is the graveyard that our people are sleeping in. And if they don't wake up, if they don't break that cross, if I can't, or if they can't be unnailed from that lie, if they continue to hold on to that lie, if they continue to take refuge in Jesus, the lie, if they continue to hide in these churches, these, these false prophets, under false hood as we hid ourselves. They are going to be lost by the millions. That is why I harp and harp and harp on this Jesus life. That's why I do it. That's why there's a caricature of Jesus on my invitations to these meetings. Because that is the number one thing according to the book of Isaiah, according to the 13th chapter Revelation of the dragon, that's what's going to send our people to hell. The devil deceived the nations of the earth with the great lie. What's that lie? Christianity. The body of Jesus in Jerusalem now. They just won't let it go. So, in closing, when you leave, and on the morrow, and on the week after that, and the years after that, when you see your people dying, and no help coming to them. This is because of a lack of knowledge. This is because their fathers, their parents rejected Elijah Muhammad. And they're, they're, they're paying the price for that. Because of lack of knowledge. So don't go blaming God or wondering why God won't do something. Don't, don't make that mistake. Because he done told us what he was going to do to the people that made a covenant with death and with hell they agree. He told you what he was going to do. And he told you what he's going to do for the people that call upon his name. And that laid on to that precious stone that he laid here for 40 years. Elijah Muhammad. So you're not going to accuse God of being unjust. The mere fact that you're still walking around here and destruction ain't coming, his hand is still open. He done laid the truth out. You're not seeking it. You don't seek knowledge. 